You've taken, <laughs> you've taken something good and pure like OpenGL and ran it through DirectX. Why would you do this? Don't lie to people. No one likes OpenGL. And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show gives us the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, we got a big chunky news section. Not so much with a steamed couple of interesting things, but... I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits in our little Linux-powered studio. And the man who's soon to move horizontally to another place. Is it like up north? Or... <laughs> oh no, he's doing it again. <laughs> so confusing. That is Jordan Svong and Pedro Mateus, soon to be Hello. Pedro with a fresh battery. Uh, Pedro with a fresh battery. That's what we're going to be calling. Yes, it. Mateus. <laughs> what, what, what kind? Of, what kind of battery do you put in your Pedro? Though is it like a D cell or like a double A? No, or a... baby. It, it, yeah. Well, I mean, it stacks C's. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, they the don't go ones. up my butt if you're wondering <laughs> damn it is, is, is that why Staying I can't turn you on Pedro bedtime. on the Isle of Britannia and together with you Shot Realm Dynamic watching us live helping us form Cocaine Voltron but before we get started we'd like to play around and see what's going on in each other's life organs uh, Pedro tell me more about this new battery you're going to buy yeah, apparently because I replaced the uh, the case on this system, and it did the same thing that when I first put everything together on this motherboard, which was it didn't like the two sticks of RAM, so the solution was to pull out one of the sticks, turn it on, let it post successfully, turn it off, put the uh, other stick back in, and... <laughs> magically there it goes and uh yes apparently i've just been informed by everyone uh that uh, that is an issue with the lithium ion hey i did <laughs> we'll just up like that we can we can like reach over jordan he's so small look at him he's way down there the other, the, the other one yeah. aww <laughs> <That's space>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, having a little well, so, too much yeah, fun and the new case is actually working very well uh the Suppose there is a reason the uh, fractal defined C is as popular as it is, because yeah, CPU temperatures are very much on point. I guess that's a a bonus of having the front fans that much closer to the um, actual heating. Fractal makes some really nice cases. What type of like... uh, I'm very curious. What type of CPU you have? One that uh, your AMD is a what is it one? Jordan thirty seven hundred X. Mine's the third. Mine's the 39. Okay, we have the same case, so you have a 750D. What, what, what are your temps with that D? Uh, with, oh, Jordan's D. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about Jordan's D, baby. We're always talking about Jordan's D. Right now, for whatever reason, it's 50 degrees. Hmm. But like, yeah. Uh, but it's also like really warm in here passively anyways, so right. it's probably not it's not helping it. Speaking uh, of yeah, yesterday, what's man? <laughs> uh me not fucking much man i got a, i got a month until i move less doing all that less than yeah 20 29 days it's crazy um yeah so getting all that shit together i ordered a squat rack i'm so excited to be able to lift weights again you have no idea oh. i feel so i feel i feel all weak and floppy um, <laughs> toronto <floppy>. man incapacitated but <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh that'll be interesting I so I've been playing around. Last night we played um, Twitch sets up a Raspberry Pi that went about as well as one might imagine. Um, <laughs> never, never ceases to amuse me. Uh, we, we definitely had some people later on. They're like, "Hey, being helpful," but people have fuck all idea what they know. Uh, speaking with just straight authority to the point, I'm like, "Oh, this person knows what they're talking." No, you don't. You're just copying and pasting <laughs> stuff off the internet. Stop that. So that makes perfect sense. No, wait, it, it's insane. Yeah, wow, well, let's try it again. <laughs> it took about two hours. Uh, I got a, you know, Raspberry 4, 8 gig with a kit, because that's like the easiest way to get one instead of waiting for one to show up and put the kit together, got it to boot off the uh, USB 3.1 drive. I'm just going to say this. All my brothers and sisters at Canonical, I love you. You know that. You also know I'm about to say something. Um, whatever intern you have working on that image, Nah, man, just no, like maybe, maybe tighten up. Cause I, I would like to say, I would like to have something like Ubuntu server. Hey, I'm going to run that on the Pi. The process, unless I'm missing something, feel free to write in of just getting it to boot from the uh, USB three drive. Uh-uh. Compared to Pi OS, it's just like, oh, setting done. Okay. Hey, 
It's a beautiful thing. So I'm doing that to set up Mr. Jit Seeks, which hopefully I'm probably going to have to rope Jordan in because some networking stuff to get that set up uh, for our own little uh, personal Jitsi server. And that's about it. What a, oh, Doom 3. Me and Jordan played yeah. Doom 3. We played <laughs> Doom 3 Coop. It was so scary, Jordan. I definitely couldn't see what was going on in front of me. That's... <laughs> That's the thing that happens. It wasn't. This was the first time we tried to play it. Uh, Forty-five minutes of well, Jordan's like, well, I need to find something new to stream. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what, what can I get up and running in five minutes? <laughs> shit, 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 shit. Oh man, dude. But I mean, the horse isn't getting up and running anytime soon, though. Why not? Is it full because, of Because no, it's because it's dead. It's been dead for eight fucking years. It's the Steam update. update. You know what else is dead, though? I am. No. Mm, no, nothing's dead. And you just quit, quit imagining. Things. Oh, no. This <laughs> happened, didn't it? Yeah. Counter-Strike. Go. Global Offensive. Steam Store. Kind of got, you know, uh, what's that? Deleted. Whoopsie poops. <laughs> yeah. It, it disappeared, man. Valve uh, kind of didn't say anything about it, but uh, they had a nice little uh, whoopsie doodle from their official account, which... <laughs> Yep. Tap, 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 <laughs> tap, tap. tap. <laughs> I, I, I can't control set fast enough. Oh, man. How do yeah, you think so something like that makes it through, man? Like, oh, I, I've, I've seen it happen. Like, and, and you know what happens. He clicked the button, or whoever it is clicked the button, immediately realized what they did, shat their pants, <laughs> had a heart attack, and is immediately crawling through a backup to see if they can restore what they just deleted. Okay, here's here's one that might be too real. Okay, you're working on something you do in a remote. You get it done. And this is something that's not going to take effect. Well, it's already taken effect, but the people are all asleep because it's 3 o'clock in the morning. You go to bed. 45 minutes and you i'm just writing like oh no well oh, no. let's get back up and get everything back on yes <laughs> yeah no i think this is very much a uh, henlin's razor there was a lot of speculation on twitter that oh maybe they're uh do no oh, they, they, no. they most likely were delisting pages related to artifact uh but uh accidentally oops Counter-Strike goes with... It went down at 6.20 GMT, and it took three hours before Valve Time kicked in. So, I wonder what they were up to. I get a feel that they were definitely up to something, as opposed to, like, an oopsie doodle. I mean, I mean you, 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 know, you never know, right? Like... <laughs> This is one of their most profitable and most played games currently, so yeah. <laughs> as far as far as technology snafus from like major gaming companies go, like I th I think remember when Sony was transmitting people's like credit card information over plain text mm -hmm. for yeah. like the PS. Yeah, like it's like oh, well, it's like this is a it's nothing, right? Like someone deleted yeah, a website. single game disappearing from the steam store yeah okay <laughs> it's, well, it, it's it's funny haha -ha, though it's 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 always fun to it chuckle is, is, it was some like, poor <sighs> operators misfortune yeah well, let's talk about something a little bit cool remote plays the thing but some games don't support it yes Until especially now. those games that are you know on steam officially but uh people have been wanting to add those games as non-steam shortcuts and use remote play together well you have remote play whatever together whatever uh it's not a shakira song but it comes very close uh tiny application that lets you force remote play together on any game you have in your steam library including non-steam ones and yeah the launch procedures aren't exactly um click play and away you go there's some alt tabbing required which will confuse certain games <laughs> there are some games that do not like being alt tabbed hi bethesda i mean Hi, Microsoft. Uh, the, um, yeah, oh, that's but official outside now, too. of Mathesda. Yes. Yeah, Mathesda. <laughs> it's that they've been, uh, the EU was like one of the last blockers and they said, yeah, no, that's fine. So away they go. Uh, but yeah, it is, the setup is straightforward enough. It's just not a one click play like Steam Remote uh, is for the official games. So keep that in mind if you do decide to give this a try. But, for say old um games that you're playing through an emulator this is perfect 
if you don't, yep. if that emulator doesn't have network uh, support, we, this is amazing. We, what, one of the we things, tried, Jordan, we tried, say, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog, right? Like, yeah. And so my, my first thought was this, uh, what do you think, Jordan? It was like, what type of, like, just maybe just sit down and just see what type of nightmare fuel we can concoct with games that don't support this. Right. Yeah. Like how, how does it handle the input? Is it, I'm pretty sure it's like wiki, wiki, wild, wild west over here. Whoever, whoever first grabs the mouse has control there. Yeah. There, there's definitely like a lot of, um, there's a lot of games like Suro, the game we threw chairs at. Uh, that would be wonderful over over remote play um, or uh, other tabletop simulator games, except that as remote play. But you you get you get my point. Um, lot, lots of stuff could benefit from having multiple people be able to input things. I I, I even for like uh, for for uh, adventure games, you could do like crowd control shit. That might be fun. Oh. That, hmm. <laughs> yeah, that. you only have yeah, the right? one cursor, so yeah, it would be people yeah. fighting each other's mouse inputs. No, 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 you let people set up to uh, get keyboard control, you know, with the votes and just sit right Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> some, 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 some shit like that. I, I can see some shenanigans <laughs> happening. So I did see that there was an update to Proton, and eventually, you know, billions of years later, Val decided to post a change along, which I almost fell over, which I do sometimes. <laughs> I mean, again, Valve is really bad with the change log for Proton I'm like Experimental. A teapot with knives. <laughs> Yeah. Last last updated, but when or or like what was the last update? Well, I'll tell you, uh, they have uh, improved uh, VR support uh, because, you know, Proton is the only way that you can really do VR on Linux if you're not uh, playing Half-Life Alex. Oh, a few uh, texts. But, I mean, that, that's that's been in there for a couple weeks now. Um, yeah. It's still been in Proton <laughs> Experimental. Uh, that hasn't made its way into Pro- Proton proper. The other thing they added was uh, they're they're trying their damnedest to get that uh, DualSense working. Uh, Pedro, you're saying that it uh, it works now out of the box? Uh, sort of, kind of, maybe. Uh, with Proton, uh, if you're using Proton Experimental, it, and this is really noticeable if you have a game that has a native Linux version and you see that the face buttons are all misaligned. They're like rotated one over. Because uh, you threw it against if the you wall. Change uh, no, uh, oh. if you change to Proton Experimental, uh, you do see that the buttons are actually properly aligned and it, it wait, has wait. the correct layout. So are, are, are you saying that like X is where square is and square is where triangle is and triangle is where circle is? And is that what you're, is that what you're describing? It, it is uh, instead of the cross being the confirm, it turns into square and then everything is rotated one over. Oh. Oh, okay. I, so, I see. I see. Were you like having like muscle memory flashbacks from the early days of like Unity on Linux? Yes. <laughs> or, or, and it's or, most or, prevalent with Unity games that, because in Proton Experimental, they'll work fine with the dual sense now, times, but the native that, version. Step one you reached over and saw if the controller did something, then you get out the pen and paper to map it out to whatever they were mapped to randomly. I'm just yep. remembering like the PlayStation because like Square Games used the Super Nintendo layout for all of their stuff, but everyone else used like excess confirm instead of circle. And that I remember that fucking me up constantly. So I'm glad, the I'm glad support this kick it in though, right? Yeah. That's some uh, some better support for the for the yeah. index. I'm down with that. Yes. And Anno, man. Anno for Data for that that's one of those games like people will bite you if you talk bad about. <laughs> oh, pe- people love that Anno ser- uh, series, but it's like it's City Builder fans. So the people who are into City Skylines and Factorio and shit like this. I okay. love Anno. Anno. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. We got a couple of updates. Yes, Avorian. we do. First you one do. is uh, Avorian. It's now up to 2.0 and they have some massive changes that will fundamentally improve many aspects of the game or so they claim. Uh, we did throw chairs at it a while back, if I'm not mistaken. <gasps> Probably. We did. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> uh, it was the ship game that you got to build your own ship. Uh, oh, it, yeah. Uh, that yeah. needed some Polish. It did. Uh, and uh, they have new progression system, which means you actually, as you progress, you gain knowledge of new materials, which means that you don't have to go into specific points in the quote-unquote story to... Um, learn about those materials and be able to purchase them from stores. So that very much helps uh, both new and um, older players that are maybe giving it a replay. Or 
Maybe, as Jordan will tell you, there's another play mode. <laughs> yeah, they they added free play. So if you're none, if you're not willing to like go through the campaign to get all the blocks, and you just want to build some cool ass spaceships and make them go pew pew, they now will have you have that support for you, so, which is nice because that, that was one of the things. Where it's like, yeah, build the spaceship, but like all the all the blocks they give you by default are just kind of meh. Uh, so uh, maybe I'll take another crack at that and try and build Murder Cube in space. Cool. I always like to see it when you, know, you will see something that has released like this final product, but you start seeing some updates to make it like a game that you want to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How many times have you seen that as opposed to, hey, we've released this and just F off and never touch it again? I mean, Bes- Besiege was kind of like that, except it's like, oh, now I really want to play this. Yes. Oh, now I really want to play this. Speaking <laughs> of things I really wanted to play, that was Skull, and there's an update, but it didn't remove the roguelite feature. <laughs> nope, they didn't. <laughs> um, but they they have a bunch of other stuff. Um, they fixed some bugs, uh, so now you can progress past Chapter 4 if you get the Mage Adventure. Um, they added a shit ton of new items. If you scroll down, there's a big list of them, including the Pot of Greed, but I don't know what Pot of Greed does. I need an ancient Egyptian laser beam to explain it to me. Um, the localization <laughs> uh, have also been fixed, uh, and now most of your controllers will work at the title screen. So, you know, that's that's some nice stuff. Mm. And we got some new people, man. New NPC, the Grave Robbery. He will sell you some Grave Robbery business. And um, like you said, man, some grave bunch rubber. of bug fixes that I never made it far <laughs> enough into this game to experience. But it's a mm-hmm. solid game. Like, mechanics are very solid in this game. Controls well, looks pretty, has decent music. I just don't like roguelites. Yeah. yeah, even for people who do like roguelites, such as myself, uh, the amount of randomization at play here makes it so... It is very hard for you to find the skulls that you actually like the gameplay style of. And one of the things that I would like them to add is the ability to let you pick one of the skulls that you've unlocked to start the game with, which they don't right now. The the most you get is the wolf person at the start that drops a random skull is like, eh, there you go. So the, really? they actually did they actually did add some stuff. Uh the boss items, you have the option of always starting with one of them. Uh they talked yes, about Yes, the boss once. items, not the skulls. <laughs> not the skulls. Um, boss skulls. Yes. <laughs> boss skulls. That, that's my new ska band, by the way. The boss Welcome skulls. back to nineteen ninety five and Phantasmagoria just launched on four CDs. I'm sure I got all the dates wrong in the amounts, but F and B is not dead kids. No, Dark Side of the Moon is out. Uh, what is it? Again? When his two young children vanish mysteriously through the night. It's, it's up to a single dad Dean. Oh, Hamilton. Okay, so you're tracking down people, but what's most interesting is it's just a straight up FMV game, so I wanted to give it like, hey, people are still making these, and and I'm gonna say this, outside of just being a bold choice, cinematography in this, halfway decent. You know, yeah, this doesn't look uh, like the handicam thing that was it recorded? Uh, remember the there, other FMV, like yeah. semi? You know the one I'm talking about, Pedro, because it's yeah. the same camcorder I have. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, these actors have been in like some other FMV games that have come out recently too. The the bald dude is Inspector Jenks in one of those detective games. Yeah, so there's been like a like a group in England who's been pumping them out pretty frequently. I guess this is their newest one. I mean, like, Wh- I, don't, which, I don't know, you know. It's not a terrible looking. It's certainly better than the original Dark Side of the Moon, a sci-fi adventure released in 1998 by South Peak Interactive. Okay, because we, we gotta, when that first came out, <laughs> we gotta sneak into these requirements. That's that's a new um, additional note. No, no, no desktop environment running on top of X11 windowing system. Nvidia proprietary drivers of AMD graphics drivers, other configurations. Okay, so they, they recommend you have gnomes. Wrong show, old man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I i i think like this is this is they're, they're targeting quote unquote steam os because that ships with quote unquote gnome mm. i think uh, i think um, they're targeting ubuntu <laughs> well i i mean i mean th- th- this looks like something out of a document that valve had sent the developers about targeting linux they're like yes have a compositor installed and x11 and <laughs> No, they specifically say Ubuntu either sixteen oh four for the minimum or twenty oh four for the recommended. So you, you yeah, think, like some of the logic behind that because like yeah, like hey, if you got GNOME installed, that's gonna drag in enough dependencies where we're probably safe. 
No? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no in Steam. Yeah, yeah. You're probably good. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, the game itself looks good as far as FMV games go, but that title... That that threw my brain into wait a second. I played Dark Side of the Moon in the nineties. Wait, I I I played it in the eighties because it was a record by Pink Floyd. Yes, it was, it was a double album <laughs> that Floyd I wrote record. cigarettes on. <laughs> yeah, it was, I, honestly, honestly as, as far as Floyd albums go, I think that one's my favorite. I like the cover art. I don't know why. Yeah. Mine was always it, knackered it, up by the time I got it. But it, it, it is definitely an iconic cover. It is. So we like to play like checkbox and stuff like this. And I'm going to give this a mention. This drawn guess, mainly because it's got online PvP, baby. Yeah, it's it's out finally. We talked about this. Oh, Does you want to be think. an ankle biter? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's Pictionary. It's Pictionary. It costs three bucks on the Steam store. It has Linux support. and It's got multiplayer. And that's kind of all you really need for yeah. Pictionary, right? Like... What was uh, <laughs> what was it called uh, that used to be, that for like a hot second the internet thought it was great draw something remember that draw something yeah um yeah. That, that that one uh, scriblio still exists as well if you don't want to pay money but like mm-hmm. yeah it's on it's on Steam it has Linux support we'll give it a we'll give it a shout out yeah it's sure. like two bucks might pick it up play it around <laughs> see what happens yeah it'd be terrible <laughs> I in in my in my experience though for Pictionary you got to put like a thirty second clock on it so people don't have too much time to draw. And then you got to make the no tablets rule. Right? Yeah, <laughs> mouse, mouse only. <laughs> Alan, right? Com- coming up next, Microsoft contributes some DirectX code to Linux because this is the future. Oh my God! Future it's code? No. And wouldn't you know it? Nope. We've already arrived. At the news. Yeah. Pray the, sexy Zenu. <laughs> yes, you can pray Zizu. sexy Zenu as much as you'd like. Zizu, yes. Uh, and um <laughs> Steve Zisu, the wife aquatic. Can you just like, oh man, just walk and be like, oh, who's Bay? Oh, that's Zizu. I, I, now, now I want to watch that movie, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zenu, and it's just like Bill Murray playing Zenu. <laughs> oh man. I could get behind uh, that. All right. Well, if listen, <laughs> Our, our wonderful listening audience, if you want to watch us make this movie, if you want to see this movie, We'd like give to us some money. Independent film. Right. Head on over to <laughs> patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. I don't even know. We, 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 we got a Discord channel. We got we got show notes you get access to. We got the pre pre super shows and you get access to a lot of cool stuff by becoming a Patreon. We try to over deliver, man. Yeah, it's, it's true. 25 cents a week, dollar a month. That's not we're do- Dollar a week, twenty five cents. Dollar, do- dollar a week, yeah. yeah. <laughs> twenty five cents times four a week. Canadian math, man. Not once, not even once. <laughs> it, it, listen, it's the exchange rate. I don't know how much money's worth anymore. I pay for mit- things in Monopoly cash. But yeah, uh, you can head on over to our Patreon, check that out, get a bunch of access to a bunch of videos, content, early stuff. Um, you can get access to the show notes, add comments, make suggestions, yell at us in, during the week while we cobble together a loose association of facts that we relay to you over the internet we got i've heard of it yes cats. we have a store full of cats <laughs> store.linux <laughs> game <laughs> yeah uh store. Game linux gamecast. <laughs> linux gamecats.com we need to register that we need we need to do that for like episode 69 Man. 690 just like dude nian free as, I, as, I want listen. my persona to be drawn yes as I somebody do. who's <laughs> sitting here registering a domain name this afternoon <laughs> Shit almost mm-hmm. got real with that. I'm like, no. Oh, no. no. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we we got wish lists. Uh, if you they're on, they're on our website under the support tab. You can go there. Uh, if you buy us stuff, off, barbells. Yeah, get me a barbell. What's wrong with your barbell? It's so long. It's it's not long enough. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Pedro, do you have anything? Do you get your RGB? cables and <laughs> yes and, and the ssds and, and, and the controllers what's wrong with this uh, drive yeah. it's so squished uh, it is a 2242 uh nvme is ssd it, is it cold <laughs> no it's just meant to go into the x240 that that's about it <laughs> you gotta oh, release yeah. the kraken <laughs> We got one yeah. for the studio if you want your name here so we can shame you and like all the stuff I do here in the guides and more, stuff. More microtech stuff, really? Are you are you that much of a glutton for, con- for punishment? I'm hooked, man. This is my new drug. It is self-flagulation. Um, studio stuff, you know, I don't really have anything, but, you know, isola- yeah, isolation transformers. Ooh, exciting. Yeah. But um, that'll get you on the uh, find upstanding accountable board. But hey, thanks, everybody. 
that's how we get Indeed. to do this. And uh, that's with your support. So also, Indeed. if you sub to us, you give us some uh, Bezo bucks and be like, hey, man, I got my Amazon Prime subscription and all that. <laughs> if you drop that in, you can also come snack a pick and hang out with us in Discord the other six days a week. Sick day is a week. Yeah. Yes. It, just every, the sick days day. of the week. <laughs> every day the with Linux the week, not happening. It's a sick day. It's, it is. Um, <laughs> speak, speaking of sick, you know, you, know, you know what's sick? Microsoft contributing open source code. Nah, never happened. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> no. that's true. Um, any, anyways, uh, Mesa has a new version out. Mesa 21.0.0.0 has finally been released. It has sparse texture support. Looking forward to, because that means I can play Valhalla on my AMD box and not be super chuggy because the 1080 Ti cannot do DX12 super well. Um, they have a big performance bump for RDNA 2 cards. Um, they've Im uh, implemented a bunch of ARM stuff as well for uh, ARM systems. The neat thing, though, is apparently Microsoft has some uh, DirectX code in here for uh, the WSL that they've been contributing. Yes. I, I did be... catch that bit of news earlier in the week, but yeah, Jordan was the one who was like, oh yeah, there's a new version of Mesa that already has that. Oh, but yeah, Microsoft was implementing OpenGL over um, DirectX 12 for the WSL stuff, and uh, like, there is going to be... It's like it's like DXVK, except so much worse. <laughs> Yeah. You've taken <laughs> you've taken something good and pure like OpenGL and ran it through DirectX. Why would you do this? Don't lie to people. No one likes OpenGL. <laughs> I, I like it better than DirectX. Fair. Is, that that what, wasn't what, a very difficult choice. What exactly does it mean on the Linux side of things? Is it going to help out anything? Not so much. Not at what this moit? No. no. Moit. Mo mo what it's what it's going to do is it's going it's going to enable people to do graphical development on the WSL, mm -hmm. which I mean is better than nothing. At least they're going to test their software on a Linux environment. Microsoft is really throwing some bones on. Like, don't leave you guys. Yeah, they're they're mm -hmm. they're really trying to position Microsoft as this is the best place to de to develop your Linux software, not on a Linux environment where it's going to be running anyways. You try to tell mm -hmm. that to the guys uh, over at Machinery. No. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh baby so this, this is interesting uh, uh machinery is a modular uh plugin based uh engine that's in development these people have been uh working on their uh, bunch of uh former game developers that have decided they want something that they would use um and they've gone and added uh linux support and they made a little blog post they talk about how um, how they how the <laughs> X11 is better than they, they they implemented everything themselves. They talk about how they implemented X X windowing via XCIB, uh, clipboards, also. It's 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 real interesting, but you don't need to do any of that shit because SDL two exists. And I got I gotta I gotta say this: it's it's wonderful machinery devs that you actually took the time to add some Linux support, but don't in reinvent the wheel. Don't don't try to do things that have already been done super well. SDL2 exists. It handles all your input, all your windowing. It supports X, Wayland, OSS, Alsa, Jack. <laughs> all, all this stuff that you don't have to write code for yourself. It just does it for you. As Use it. We were talking free. in pre pre super shows. I'm going to go back and listen to that if you want. It's in podcast format. But this came across. I was reading this and I'm like, yes, it's too obvious. I don't, I don't think anybody interested in getting anything over to Linux is blissfully unaware of SDL. This comes really does come across as like, I wanted a challenge. I wanted to see if I could do this with also what I was just going to hard code everything. And just, uh, it, it kind of hurts your brain when you look at it and you think <laughs> about it. I mean, seriously looking at targeting X 11 when Waylon is barely nine years away now, because Wayland's about to come hard, strong, and fast. If you do not know that, I mean, don't quote me on this. NVIDIA drivers, with well, the Wayland support going to show up before the end of the month? Shh, I didn't tell you that. But also, you just don't target also. You don't. That, that's, that's low level. Yeah, it's low level kernel stuff. There's the reason you don't mess with it. You threw something in between it. Be it nasty pulse. You know, Jack should never be in consideration for a game engine. Um, Pipe wire, maybe. Uh, since that's the new thing, I don't know, man. It it just made me really uh, curious. So now, if you want to play around with this brand new game engine, you need to create an account, and I did because I want to play with it. Went to launch it on Debian Bullseye, and I was met with just straight up segfault. Which okay, excellent. 
I don't oh, even know what to say. Write, write, write and direct <laughs> X code, man. That, that's a great way to make your software stable, right? Unity. Dude. Yeah. I eagerly await for a game to be released with the machinery engine. Um, hopefully it won't turn out as bad as the few Godot games that we've thrown chairs at. But uh, no, I very much look forward to that. But like Jordan said, which subreddit were you looking at not to find any mention of SDL2? It was looking at the Unity subreddits from <laughs> six years ago when they were like, you know what? We're going to do our own input handler from scratch because that makes sense. <laughs> oh, Natasha Bar, that wasn't a great idea. <laughs> well, hey, they, at least on Unity, they have like middleware tools. What is it? Um, the, Re- rewired. Uh, rewired. The, rewired. Yeah. That that yeah, that just uses the SDL uh, game controller database for a good reason. <laughs> Indeed. So let's put on our uh, fixie hats. Hmm? So wait, wait, what, what does this have to do with audio on Linux? Audacity, something? Yeah, man, it's uh, the hot new hotness, man. We're we're playing beat boot music <laughs> with our <laughs> Atari not VCS, but I wanted to give this a mention. I thought it was kind of VCS. interesting. Audacity <laughs> games. <laughs> They're going to start making brand new Atari 2600 games, uh, you know, from not from 1977, but 2021. And the reason I'm throwing this in is every release will come with a download or digital version uh, with a serial number. So, you know, it's authentic digital version, uh, which is going to run with a Stella emulator. So we'll be able to play it at home on Linux. But I have to imagine that the... It's a very niche audience. Uh, then again, you know, if they can ship carts with boxes and the games, uh, hipsters will snatch them the hell on. And, uh, you know, like their little pitch here is like, oh, yeah, you know, low base price for a brand new, brand new Atari game. It's going to run you about 60 bucks. But there's a collector edition with a higher price and another VIP Super Ultra Mega Collector Edition, <laughs> which is slightly more. And guess what? They're going to be numbered, so they're even more valuable. To someone, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Like, at the, in, in principle, they're talking about how uh, they're starting off with the 2600, but their goal is to just make games in general for older consoles uh, that you can play on them, right? Not a, not a, not a bad thing. We've seen, we've seen uh, a number of games that are able to do that. Um, they've like, oh, hey, we, we built this for a modern thing, but we'll, you can dump this on a Genesis cart and it will run, right? So that, that's kind of neat. Um, you gotta give me some props, no matter no matter what. If you're developing a game for twenty six hundred, I want oh, to see. What, I want to see what a modern dev environment looks like for twenty six hundred. Yeah, it, it looks. It's an interesting place to start. I don't know. I would have gone with Super Nintendo if I were making games for older hardware, but that's just me. Yeah, that's easy mode compared to mm, yeah to the Atari. <laughs> yeah, you 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 have memory on the Super Nintendo. You do not have that on the twenty six hundred. Man, kudos. Uh, yeah. I look forward Retro's to it. cool. If the digital you know? downloads aren't uh, like crazily <laughs> priced, if they have, give, give me some with the numbers filed off, like the reject digital versions for like 20 bucks, <laughs> I might pick one up just to support it, man. So I got a stream deck and it, you know, I paid too, I did pay too much for it. I paid more than I really should. Oh, hang on. I got it in my hand. I was like, where'd it go? Right. That's right. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, you, you love that. Where the hell are my glasses? Oh, right. <laughs> And they're a bit expensive for what they are because, you know, the first thing you're going to do when you get a stream dunk is take it apart. You're like, oh, oh, it's a bunch of little individual OLED screens. And then that's no, it's not. It's just like some ultra cheap LCD screen with a membrane <laughs> over it. It is about $9 worth of parts. So, you know, if you get a spare um, Game Boy laying around, you might be able to uh, make something. Yeah, uh, if you have a spare Game Boy with a uh, Raspberry Pi inside it, like uh, this experimental Pi bag that uh, has one of these, if I can shake it off. What's in the bag? <laughs> there you go. Oh, there it <laughs> it is. It's flying like, woo! <laughs> Smash! And, uh, yeah, uh, if it has a Raspberry Pi in them, uh, you absolutely can. Not just Raspberry Pis, though, because there's actually a x64 client for your 64-bit x86 machine. I get a good uh, credit, if you. I get, this is some Vin Stone level camera work. Watch this. Where, where, where? <laughs> yeah. yep. Slight shakiness. Slight shakiness. But yeah, it well, is. Battlestar uh, Galactica. <laughs> uh, it is very much available for a bunch of different platforms. There's also an Android version. So if you have an old phone or an old tablet kicking around, you can just install the APK. It's 
yeah, like they say, it's completely free. You can uh, clone their Git, build it yourself, or download one of the pre-built versions. Uh, there's a client side and a server side. Obviously, you want to be running the server side on whatever you're running uh, OBS proper on. And then you have the client that you just assign things to. And it, the, the UI seems fairly intuitive, so I might be tempted to give this one a go. Not that yeah, I have you, too many scenes that I switch between. <laughs> if you got and if you got to spare one of those Raspberry Pi touchscreens, this is a great little project to set up. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. defi- definitely a lot cheaper than a Stream Deck. And if you need just a thing to hit buttons and make OBS do a thing, yeah, go for it. I'd say go play around with it. I mean, if you get the parts laying around and uh, there's a bunch of stuff because they're like, I I, I gotta say though, Java on ARM, man, it's it's a thing. Java on ARM. It is a thing. I think Pi is over. It'd be interesting to see one of these set up with a um, like Pi Zero, or like the uh, Pi so, Pico. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm setting it up on my AWS Graviton instance that can apparently compete with an x86 box. <laughs> Bet I've seen dumber stuff than that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Probably <laughs> by magnitude. Um, go play with it. Go check it out. Uh, Stream Deck. It's reverse engineered. They do work on Linux, but like doing more advanced stuff. Like I, I haven't even released the video because I don't want to put the type of ammunition in people's hands because you could do some serious damage with OBS WebSockets and uh, Stream Deck and calls, and it's very complicated to set up. So something that could work more or less out of the box would be a most welcome solution. Yeah, I'm, 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 with, I'm with Strider. When Kitar support? Kitar. Kitar, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. MIDI inputs. You can assign MIDI inputs in OBS. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, OBS is, oh, man. Stay tuned, kids. MIDI support in OBS is a whole different uh, but, kind of so I, Speaking I'm, about hand... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, speaking... You, you can continue. No, it's too late uh, now. You've it's committed. too late. <laughs> I have committed. Fine. You know, speaking about stuff with Raspberry Pis in them... Yeah, this absolutely doesn't have does a not. Raspberry <laughs> We talked about this. This is the Aya Neo. This was the Super Matrix uh, Ryzen 5 4500 APU. Um that handheld gaming i'm like hey man i don't really think there's a market for this <laughs> like get wrecked vin stone yeah there is because this motherfucker got funded it did i mean they crushed their goal it is ready to go uh, it was 2957 percent funded of the original goal of 54 grand this is like a million dollars and something like boom and there's still like 27 1300 13 and counting <laughs> I, I guess people really like the Game Gear. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, lads. Is they're saying this thing's ready to ship in May. So interesting. That tells me, without having to re- read through like tea leaves or anything, um, these <laughs> things are made ready to box. They just need shipping, mm-hmm. money for shipping, distribution. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. I'm. It, it, this was market research. It, it, this it wasn't market what, research. They've already made them. Market research is like we're thinking about. Yeah, no, it's like, market research for which regions are going to order the most consoles where because to it's send one them. of the. Uh, so I, yes. I wonder. <laughs> I retract because when I see something on Indiegogo, that's my first. The first clue is that not being on Kickstarter. Here's a pro tip. Kickstarter is like you got to have a functioning prototype. If you're going to put something like <laughs> hardware wise, that's when you see like, oh, those are some nice 3D renders. This, just looking at that and I'm like, oh, these things are already made. So I'm not telling you if you want something like this to go ahead and order it because they'll probably get it to what quality it is. But yeah, they're there. It's funded and they're going to have bank unless they go like, let's scrap them all and redesign it again. I wonder how many of these pre-orders are jilted Smock Zero buyers, though. Uh, yeah no, than, there's yeah. a vocal group small as it may be that loves this kind of stuff and those people probably threw a lot of money at the smack said and uh yeah and this what, what, one what's the definition of insanity good? again <laughs> do it over and over and over and expect a yeah. different result <laughs> i don't know how much do these things what are they going to go for because uh, as uh, uh, 5.99 the, or 6.99 Something like yeah, that. <laughs> you 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 could build a better desktop, but again, you're paying for the form factor. Let's see. Yeah, six hundred and twenty-five pounds. Eight seventy for, for the... a one terabyte. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, how much to go on a date with her brother? Uh, <laughs> Seven eighty. They already troll, uh, sold out. Troll? Sold out. No. <laughs> sold out. <laughs> yeah. Nine fifty nine for the ones. ultimate package. Giggity. Yeah. The, yeah. The. Ult- <laughs> 
six thousand dollars. <laughs> Someone paid six thousand dollars for this thing. My what? God. No, that's Hong uh, Kong. No, dollars. that's uh, HKD's. Uh, H- HKD. <laughs> All right, I don't. I don't know what the exchange rate is. Well, look under it. <laughs> it, oh. it sells right below it. <laughs> oh, so it does. So twelve hundred dollars. I would not spend twelve hundred dollars on that. No, no, sir. Uh, yeah, no. If I had the kind of money, I'd be totally all over this because I like these uh, kinds of handhelds. I do. I really do. But five hundred. I don't have six hundred and twenty-five pounds to spend. I'm sorry. Yeah, six hundred dollars. <laughs> I, I, like I said, I need a date with someone's brother or something. If I'm going to spend that much, like six hundred bucks, I could buy a. In my head, I mean, I, like, I could buy so much other like entertaining stuff. I, I could make it like down payment on a new Nvidia card. Yeah. Yeah, you, <laughs> because you can't you, buy you, one for that price. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, I might you, be able to buy maybe, one of the scalper. Yay! You you could get a scalper to look in your direction. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Right. <laughs> so something we've been covering for a long time. Your yes. so, uh, there was even a, an old old uh, a players episode of myself and Ven playing York, one of the earlier versions, and uh, they have well they've released a new version version not eleven one and they've improved joypad support uh, they've also introduced a bunch of bug fixes and they did several uh refactorings of the uh internal stuff including the engine update and the networking code those have uh, been upgraded which is very very good to see so it uh, the, the whole improved networking thing got my head thinking oh maybe we need to do that uh, race what we did a long time ago <laughs> it was like three years ago or something we can finally so, settle it Mateus. yeah <laughs> that might be due for a rematch all right that's the thing it's out go play with it uh price to sell it's completely free and uh i I mean it was well done what's the thing done in like panda 3d yeah i mean like most most of the improvements came from the engine update but like Mm. i mean if if you if you if you can only read galatian or or you can actually play this game so well i mean it's no ogre man no <laughs> or tractor <laughs> <laughs> it's no it's no star trek new worlds Uh-oh. why are we talking about yeah. star trek because someone dumped a source code for a star trek game what yeah mark, uh, mark mark soden uh they released the star trek new world source code someone dumped it this was uh this was essentially a game that took place it was a real-time strategy game it took place after star trek 6 the undiscovered country and I like that. It, and the label written on the CD suggests it was a final build. Yes. In, well, I mean, ho- better than like the non-final builds, right? That doesn't ha- that don't have any of the assets. But um, yeah, the the game itself wasn't too particularly well received. It was kind of denoted as like a middling strategy game when when like Command and Conquer was in its heyday. But you know, the source is out. It's online. I expected to see it running on Linux by the end of the month. So. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, it's on arcade.org. How big is it? How, how big was the game? Do you think if I needed to download everything just out of curiosity on archive.org, it'll still probably take you about three days. Well, of course, <laughs> probably CD, <laughs> CD size, CD size. So <laughs> like under 600, yeah, yeah 500, 700, 600 megs 700. below that, uh, survey says 406.7. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> when I first saw that, I thought it was an XML file. I was like, "Dear Lord, <laughs> <laughs> right. dear God!" Oh, we're not done talking about Pi, though. No, we're not. Uh, we uh, might need a um, slice of Pi segment for LGC Weekly as well, because well, a bunch of uh, fine folks who are big fans of Raspberry Pis and Minecraft decided let's uh, let's get minecraft pi edition to actually work like minecraft proper because if you have a pi and you've started the uh, minecraft pi edition which comes included with um raspius sure, sure, you yeah. <laughs> yeah. raspinus and um raspios and uh, yeah you saw that it only has creative mode effectively and that that's it so if you wanted to play the game, I got like the feeling the that I'm supposed mode. to be taking something away from this and like that. This is some trees and shit. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's Minecraft. 
All right. All right. I'm just making sure maybe it wasn't. <laughs> I, 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 that, that's the tagline for Minecraft. Minecraft, some trees and shit. <laughs> All right. That's yep. why Microsoft. <laughs> Those are crafting resources. Go shit. explore. All right. But yeah, uh, it includes the uh, survival mode and all of the uh, monsters and whatnot. It is effectively a mod for the Minecraft Pi edition and multiplayer. Which yeah, they, they, is kind of a nice thing. <laughs> they, had, they had to go deep too. They had to like bust out some like hex editor shit to actually yep. get these mods to work to like bring it up to about feature parity with the desktop version. So it's good to see. Um, yeah, the, the fact the fact that like Pi Edition Minecraft. Well, I I know why it doesn't have multiplayer is because they don't want people to not pay money for multiplayer Minecraft. But I mean, it's for little kids, which I guess you got to capitalize on it. It, it kind of warmed the empty void where my heart should be uh, when I was doing some research on this Pi 4. That's what the kids are into, man, setting up their own um, Minecraft servers on Pies. There's a yeah. lot of documentation for them. I'm like, all right, well, at least they can um, get their Because they want to set up a athletics. server for, yeah, their, for their friends. friends ah. And they ha- the only thing that they, they have to spare is that pie that they got for Christmas. But they're so. going to have the pie, <laughs> then they're going to learn how to punch holes through mom or dad's uh, firewall that they've set up. And <laughs> well, can I have so the credentials for the router? Oh, oh that, well, that, that, that's... That, that, <laughs> that, that's how we got started uh, doing computer networking, me, me and my friends, right? Like, well, A, you didn't even have to ask because your parents didn't know. You didn't were probably, well, we come you could from probably the, get in yeah, with, yeah, the admin, that, admin. that was our generation. Mm-hmm. The, the yeah, newer admin. ones, that's not the case. You, hey, hey, you don't, you don't know that. Lots, lots of Luddite parents don't know to change the default password on the route. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say it. Though. This time and age is the parent jackpot. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> The, the, the parent lottery yeah. for sure for sure but yeah like I, I remember running like counter-strike servers and shit and like that taught me about nat punching and like mm-hmm. how to host things and whatnot so like it's good that these kids are learning these skills they're some of the more transferable aspects of playing video games so yeah ip tables baby indeed <laughs> all right coming up next we're throwing chairs at my dns provider apparently all right i mean they do they do a pretty good job mm-hmm. Welcome back to the Chairquisition, where we're going to try and set up a zone transfer. Yeah. Uh, no, we're not, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not making any more DNS jokes. Yeah, we're we're throwing chairs at Hover. It's from Medgar Studio, um, or Fusty Game, maybe the developer, uh, developed on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about twenty bucks US. What is it? Experience the thrills of fast-paced single and online or all, single and multiplayer parkour game. Join the rebellion and deride security forces of an anti-leisure tyranny. Rise up as the many challenges of futuristic open world. Assemble your team, enhance your gear, gear and perform incredible tricks and combos. Uh, I guess I'm going first this week because I actually kind of like this game. So, on Fedora 33, 64-bit with the i7 6700K and the Radeon 5700 XT. Yeah, uh, you can get into the menu, but every time you try to start the game, uh, the game just crashes. Uh, nice. On, yeah, so uh, smash that Proton button, fam, and everything works perfectly fine. On the uh, rise on Fedora 32 with the Ryzen... R9-3900X with the GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, it works out of the box, no issue. Um, One thing I will give credit to this game for, because we have seen some shitty fucking cloud save implementations. (laughs) Despite running this on multiple computers on Proton, it picked up my save. It does not give a fuck. So credit where credit is due. Um... Yeah, the uh, controller doesn't work out of the box. Ven clued me into, oh, if you just set the Xbox controller or PlayStation controller as, like, the default input on the game menu, it'll work. And it does, but it's poo-poo. I played it with Waz for the most part, and it is infinitely more playable, which is unfortunate because I kind of want to sit back on the couch and play this. Um, It really likes that 1080p window in the middle of your screen and Mm -hmm. will not... Yeah, These guys will talk about it far more than I will. Needless to say, enjoy a 1080p window. Um... The soundtrack is okay. I, I think it could have used a little bit more variety, but it, I liked it well enough. And the visual style, I, I like it. it. It's it's neon jet set radio. It does a good job of uh, making sure making it look like the games that it's trying to homage slash rip off. But anyways, yeah, it's it's okay as a chill out kind of game. I mean, there there are missions, but those are really just excuses to like learn the game mechanics and get better at it and get faster at like chasing things down or hitting obstacles or getting to certain heights. Um, but they're just kind of boring. Uh, I had a lot more fun just kind of dicking around the area, running around and doing tricks. Um, 
Which, again, unfortunate because you need to do all the missions in order to get to the other levels, which is kind of kind of sad. I, I kind of like dicking around here. I think that's kind of the draw to this st or the style game. Um, I would say it gets boring after a while, though. It doesn't have a lot of like long session staying power. Uh, you, I can play about 15, 20 minutes of it and then I'll get bored of it. But the to its credit, the missions do accommodate that because they're very, very short. You can do like two or three of them in like 10, 15 minutes. So it kind of knows where it's at in terms of time consumption, uh, time profile. That's really about it. It's just kind of okay. I wish there was some more variety of stuff. I wish the controller worked. I wish that I didn't have to run it on Proton to play it in AMD. And I wish it would remember my damn full screen settings. But <laughs> you know what? For, for, for what it is, it's okay. Two cheers. Yeah, no, it's very much not okay, but more on that later. Uh, over here uh, on the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080, it launched out of the box. It, it very much does not remember the settings and keeps spawning in a 1080p window with medium settings, regardless of whatever you let it oh, last set it at. The FERPs, as you're... If you're watching the video version, as you can see on screen, they go anywhere between 144 and 70 at 1080p medium. Uh, the If you enable Steam input, it allows the dual sense and the dual shock to work just fine. The If You Pro 1 worked out of the box, you know, after the launch codes. Uh, the, the UI... Well, you're looking at it if you're watching the video. It, it, it's busy, to put it nicely. And the music is repetitive and annoying that, that that got muted very quickly and that seems to be like half the point of the game so that it, it didn't have a good showing right off the bat which gets us into the fun it's trying so hard to be jet set slash grind uh radio and yet it just seems to miss the point it seems to miss the point completely the old game was massively popular because of the chaining of tricks was barely forgiving but it still felt awesome when you could chain massive combos throughout a whole level and you'd never even touch the ground. Uh, it were always grinding, always jumping, always doing the weird stuff. That felt great. Playing Hover makes me want to snap my controller. Uh, the missions seem to be either parkour racing, trick chaining, or fetch quests, and I honestly, I couldn't tell you which one I disliked the most. The trick combos... That, those kind of missions would be nice if the mysterious ghost inputs didn't keep happening. Like, oh, the camera just turned 180 degrees for some reason, or why Never, did you I jump there? I didn't, I didn't want you to those. jump. I got some of them. Uh, mm. Some of those were even recorded on this uh, footage right here. And yeah, the buttons are not pressed and stuff just happens uh the uh i mentioned earlier that the ui is busy but that doesn't really even begin to describe it and you're highly encouraged and constantly reminded uh whenever you're standing still for a long time that you should hold down y or uh the right bumper to sh uh enter scan mode so that you can see everything really do i really need more information on screen when i already have zero fucking idea what's happening half the time the word schizophrenic kind of comes to mind if i had to describe this game and you know be massively reductive uh describe it in one word but yeah it's not um it's not my thing one chair oh what oh um yeah there you go good morning uh, mm -hmm. hey how you doing? <laughs> okay, so uh, the first thing that I was painfully aware of is on my system running Debian. Technically Debian 11, but it's Bullseye AMD Threadripper 1920X with a NVIDIA 2060. I was reminded that a 2060 is not comparable to a 1080 or a 1080 Ti. Ha <laughs> ha! Not even a little bit. 32 gigajoules of RAM. Also got that. Because this thing runs like ass, man. I mean, it launches, but that frame rate out of the box, very cinematic, man. I had to slam it down to 1080 low in order to maintain 60. And that 60 is not a given. You're looking at uh, Pedro with his 1080. Would you say it's on medium? Yep. Yeah. yeah you can see quality medium on the top right. <laughs> Oof. That's a thing, man. <laughs> so, you know what? I smashed that Proton button because, hey, you know, sometimes these older titles just came back like three years ago. Maybe Proton's going to help. We'll get some of that DX11, DXVK going on. Nothing. Didn't change a damn thing. Now, I finished the tutorial, decided to take a break. I'm going to come back to this. 
play a little more. Came back to the same nonsense Jordan was talking about, that full 3840 display. In the bottom left-hand corner, you get a nice little 1080p window. That was cute. <laughs> that was real damn cute because all the <laughs> controls are locked out and I uh, can't use the keyboard and the uh, controller not working so I couldn't adjust anything on the screen. I had to go dig in the config file and manually reset that. Yeah, get wrecked. Because um, I'm not blowing out and resetting my pre pref file every time I wanted to play the game. Now, I did find out that if you manually launch the game, set the controller to your excluding controller, whatever you're using, it works for the next time you're greeted with that screen, which is every time you launch the damn game. So, eh, I mean, each time you have to go, I mean, I'm going to say mix with working. Technically, it gets by on a technicality. If you really hate yourself enough, you can make it run. So, uh, I got to take this for what it is. You got to take what I get, uh, I'm going to say, because I never really played Jet Set Radio. I did go back and watch some videos just on YouTube of the games. Like, this is clearly inspired heavily from. That game looked fun. This one, not so much, man. Uh, I played the tutorial twice and I dicked around in a few challenge races trying to get a feel for it. And uh, sluggish controls, PS2 era graphics, performance, that would make an N64 blush. Really, what I'm going to say about that, man. Outside of that, you jump around a lot. And that's something, Pedro, maybe you can speak to that more. Jet Set had like flips and combos and all this other shit. This is to jump out of yeah. walls and shit a lot. Um, yeah, no, this is literally just grinding and running around. That that That's it. I okay. mean, I, I, I find that fun enough as it is, but, you know, different strokes, okay. right? All right, right on. Um, outside of that, uh, let's see. I guess this is something that you could sit back and play mindlessly with a controller. I mean, since it works rather well, I mean, I thought it was serviceable with a controller at least. But did a little bit of research on this. You know, Hover pulled in $116,000 from a $38,000 goal. And while they did, that's that's legit clapping. I mean this. Uh, deliver the game in 2017 because so many games just disappear into ether. But, you know, they put it out a year later, poof, smoke bomb, kind of drops support on it. And, uh, yeah, all I can say that for me, you know, Jet Set Baguette could have been something fun, special, but I don't think it really landed. I think it disappointed a lot of people who were looking for the spiritual successor. But we see that more often than not when something is labeled a spiritual successor it never ends up quite as well as and some things are probably just better left in the past but i gotta say uh, this emo, at, the, at least there's graffiti they got yeah in specific the places. 30 frames per second part right so they did make it uh very close to the original mm -hmm. yeah that's all i'm gonna say about that outside of like yeah one chair save your money on this because this thing's still like 20 bucks yeah, if if you're going to pick it up, definitely wait for it to go on sale. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think we see this a lot with Unity games, though, is they don't they don't age super well, uh, especially as time goes on. So this is this is one of those victims where this would have looked really, really cool in 2017. But well, I mean, it's kind of one of those things, though. I mean, I want to like this. I really mm -hmm. do. But even like, uh, yeah. Dak was saying uh, there's no tagging. Yeah, it is. But it's few and far between because you got to jump a lot. Yeah. You hit uh, the Y button twice to just do a pre-made tag. Mm -hmm. that, that's it. That that's the yeah. extent of tagging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there, there's there's mm -hmm. stuff you can unlock, and but that's like all. It, it's it's all hidden behind the gameplay, and I wish like you could just kind of explore it more naturally. I, I don't. I, I think maybe there's probably a lot to it. Um, given you know, like I said, I just got a little baby twenty sixty, but it should be able. to to wreck something as visually non impressive as this. So yeah. it's just sloppy coding. It's very busy. It it's unnecessarily so because there's nothing going on. I don't I don't know. I, I did Pedro's comment about the uh the crowded uh HUD. I don't know. I was able to figure out what the hell is going on because there's a big ass arrow pointing you where you need to go, mm -hmm. which kind of takes the navigation challenge out of it a little bit, but you know, whatever. Right. Uh so coming up next, we got we got a sizable hate mail segment. Couple Hot damn. Hot damn. Jordan's feeling a bit left he out. Is, so man. he's uh, open, for man. next he's week's like, oh. uh, bit of hate mail, we'd like to have a fairly Jordan centric uh, Jordan's segment. Oh boy. Yes. Uh, we need some I, some I, of that I Jordan hate myself. mail. 
I, I did not intend it to go this way, Dude. and I should have seen it coming. Send it to I'm him. an idiot. Listen, S. Rogan at LennoxGamePass.com. Yep. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I, um, I also respond to Hurley from Lost at LennoxGamePass.com. <laughs> Both of those will work, but yeah, the best way to get in touch with Jordan is to go to LinuxGameCast.com, you hit the contact button, and then on the little choosy box, you pick relationship advice, and uh, Jordan will be uh, very, very happy and not feel left out that uh, people aren't sending him any hate mail. Yeah. Nobody (laughs) hates me. They love me. Well, you know what? Since you you can get a participation trophy, you can read this first one. Okay, fine. This is about Neverwinter Nights that pa- that stream page was doing. And Daniel says, I've been playing a lot of Neverwinter Nights as of late. Great modules. Wish Neverwinter Nights 2 was on Linux. They made a sequel. They did. They did. And, uh, well, Obsidian did. Uh, the, that was one of the examples of how Obsidian is great with first party titles and shit on everyone else's because Neverwinter Nights 2 was terrible i bought the game is it like everquest two levels bad or what it's uh, honest honestly like i i didn't hate it that much i got into it because of like they updated the rule set to 3.5 that was that was kind of why i was into it that that didn't bother me as much it was just that the engine was clunky and character movement felt far more stilted than even the original neverwinter nights so also the modding tools back well, yeah, here's something because, I do want to bring up uh, real quick is let's make sure we don't miss this chance to give um, Jordan an Eiffel Tower. Yeah. <laughs> I feel yeah, I, it's harder than it looks. I feel so penetrated right now. Okay. Good. Yes. Good. That, that's a screenshot. Cover it. Taken excellent. care of. Yeah. Uh, excellent. That's, that's, that's what you want. Um, yeah. How, how's, how's that going? I missed, uh, I missed uh, last week's or uh, this past week's stream. Yeah, uh, I'm right at the entrance to the pits where we find the intellect devourer. Mm. So that's going to be the next stream. Are, 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 are we gonna... still winning, son? Yes. Okay. <laughs> are, are you going to fail that will save and have your intelligence reduced to one? Uh, hopefully not, uh, but I do have a, a potion of clarity. So if need be, <laughs> it won't eat my brain. <laughs> All right, Michael P. writes in, talking about NDI, I get a lot of NDI questions, mainly because I made a guide on setting up NDI, and the uh, creators of TriCasters, New Tech, were like, hey, we like your video, we're going to make a blog about it. So when you search for NDI on Linux, that's the first thing you get. Michael writes, hey man, uh, would a Windows 10 gaming PC to a Linux Mint streaming PC setup work with OBS NDI? If you know. Absolutely not, you need Windows 11. (laughs) <laughs> that doesn't exist <laughs> shut up but 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 then i thought network communication between windows and linux was impossible because of clocks nope uh <laughs> shut up feral <laughs> <laughs> we need the same math processor <laughs> yes in ndi is a uh, clock agnostic also um operating system agnostic i mean that would be fun because you know the- <laughs> Right here, here's this protocol we built, but you got to use the. We do an OS check because fuck you. That's why. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> so yeah, you shouldn't have any problem with that. Uh, NDI is just going to NDI. NDI uh, just set it up, stream it. OBS NDI is available for Mac, PC, um, Linux, PC Linux OS, PC Linux OS, baby. It, it, it's it, Matt. I see a lot of people like oh, I want to build like a separate streaming rig, and I get that question. Like, should I go buy like the Black Magic card? No, you just do it this way. It works. It's great. You just butter robot don't, a PC. Don't spend money on another Windows right. license either. Just set up an Xbox. Oh man, people gonna do what they gonna do. But speaking of HDMI, Pedro, it's my Myers Briggs personality type. Yes, JM is oh, asking. Yeah, remember that about sixty dollar like video I did for that sixty dollar? Like, yes, yeah. The very <laughs> ones that are in these two boxes because I I got a stack of them. That's why you can't get them anymore. Yeah, yeah and uh, JM ahead. seems to have run into the exact same issue that I did. Uh, he says, I was looking for this device on the internet and found it under the name partlink.hj11. It advertises that it can 1080p at 60fps, but it says that this is the input signal. Under resolution, only says 480, uh, 480p, 720p, 1080p. 
And so the question would be if the output really is 60 FPS or if it would be downsampled to 30 FPS as much cheap crappers do. Well, Ven read, read into one of those as well. <laughs> Oh, if you're looking for that feature. Um, oh, yeah. you, you, you mean Blue SB? <laughs> Blue SB, Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I read Three into that nope. because the the ones that I got that looked exactly like the ones that uh, Ven had got, mm-hmm. uh, they had a different encoder in them, and they looked like butt. Like complete butt. <laughs> that's the problem is like there's a billion of the shells and you don't know what the guts are made of i got lucky on that one that one never manages to stay in stock but yes if you can find it that is it is the hg11 hdmi usb 3.0 grabber which will do all day long 1080p 60 over usb 3 and it'll down sample to a Yes, Pedro. Do you need help? <laughs> I was just making sure people could read I the I didn't XR know if one. you froze or what. I'm <laughs> like, has, why the fuck he is he holding? He has some fancy encoder, Ven. Didn't you know? <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I was born with fancy encoders. I'm not impressed by this piece you, of plastic. Venstone is an encoder. If you <laughs> stick an that HDMI cord rain, down, down his throat and another one up his butt, it will do encoding. <laughs> I'm not that denying do, it. Uh, UHD at uh, 30 FPS if you plug in both Type A USB connectors uh, to type its Type C. Wait, up up his yeah. butt? Yeah. <laughs> no, the cable has two uh, What's Type got, like, A, a connectors. Multiplexer in there or some shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Multiplexed USB two man. That's the, that's the future. That is the uh, damn, USB three point one. Thing I've but heard actually, this yeah. Oh. Shit. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> We're, listen, we we can go lower. We can we can lower that On that, that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us around 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we got a schedule. Hey, Twitch, you need to make that easier to get to and easier to edit. The easiest way to get to our schedule is by going to linuxemcast.com, clicking the schedule button under live, and that'll get you there. But hour before that, if you're one of the awesome psychopaths that make this, Beautiful, beautiful train wreck possible each and every week. Our Patreons over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Or if you sub to us on the Twitch with some of Bezos bucks, uh, come to our pre-pre-super shows. And that's a production meeting. We're not going to tell you what we talk about there because it's a bit naughty. Anyway, get a hold to me and just Vin Stone on the Twitters. That's where I do the things on the Twitters. It's naughty. And uh, at Vin at mass.linuxgamecast.com because we got one of those joints. Yeah, uh, I feel very, very happy in lovely Gay Paris underneath the Apple Tower, but I don't have any baguettes. If you want to send me some baguettes, Jet do set so. Baguette. At set, Jet Set Baguette at The Burning Fool on Twitter or watch me stream at twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. Yeah, people always ask me what I, what I like most. Uh, I don't want to brag. I don't want to boast. I always tell them I like toast. I am unaccounted for, and if you got that reference, kudos. <laughs> I'm just surprised Indy I held up through that. I want some toast now. Pedro, make me some toast. Make me fries. <laughs> I do have fries, actually. But, uh, yeah, you can find me at Unaccounted for on Twitter, and that that's about it. <laughs> we didn't learn a fucking thing this week, so let's not even pretend and roll some credits. I, I got to go to France, damn you it. You shrink. Shush. <laughs> Man, <laughs> yeah, we are running Windows CE, aren't we? It's it's the bitter irony of our existence doing a Linux wince, podcast. Baby, but wince. Yes, common well, misconception. We, it didn't run Windows CE. That's true. Uh, we got. Th- I still like to make jokes about that. We got to thank our Patre- our Patreons, our lovely, lovely humans making this possible. Aldius, Bob Ramp, Scott M, Fox Dog, Arthur, and being human. <laughs> Atomic Gas, Mike G, Mike T. Hen, drummer, and our lone little licky fan, Darkwing, and our sea monsters. They're living under Scottish lakes, being very, very blurry. Jack B, Renault LePage, Rider X Machina, Paul, very new to Justin, and, and Frost had a baby. Yes, no one, and all, I, I, all no of one our knows. death notes, Nova K, Basil B, Chad P, Romeo V, Marcin K, System T, Craig H, Renee K, Leonardo C, De Kresne, Kim, Smashley G, Chris, Stephen Chill, Benjamin, Jason, Mordanka, <laughs> Joel W, Iris, Wintonian, Alad, Das Kik, Brock, Kai, Linux, Cass, Optin, Too Small, Goddammit, Craig L, No Ranger, um, but Christopher, Nevin, Joey, uh, <laughs> Mr. Alert, Sincha, Stephen, Mr. Amish, Dura, Or Geek, ah. Lada, uh, Getting Too Small Again, Damn It, Gotta Skip, Daniel, <laughs> Vasquez, Jonas Julio, Doja, Frezzo, Steve Crashy. B, Ryzen, <laughs> J, 
Too small, Michael too w. blurry. No, Bigfoot. Library.tv slash at Nixon's Pyramid. It may or may not exist. You need to collapse the wave function and look at it. Just remember, Hail Santa. Five dudes.